So now that we have had a look at some practical examples of the double entry system, let's recap. When entering information into the ledger, there are some important points that we need to keep in mind. Firstly, we need to have a look at the effect of the transaction on the basic accounting equation. We have now established that the basic accounting equation is assets are equal to equity, which is capital, plus income minus expenditures, plus your liabilities. We need to identify the accounts involved. We need to determine which should be debited and which should be credited. You have now learned that assets increase on the debit side and decrease on the credit side. And the opposite is true for equities and liabilities, which increase on the credit side and decrease on the debit side. We need to ensure that the debited amount is equal to the credited amount. And then as always, we need to indicate the date of the transaction, the name of the contra ledger account, and also remember to indicate the folio number of the subsidiary journal. The accounting process. Let's quickly have a look at the basic form of a ledger account using all the knowledge we have acquired thus far. We'll be using one of the previous examples. Jay Peterson draws 100,000 Rand from his personal bank account and deposits this as a capital investment into the Enterprise Thompson Shipping. So the first question we need to ask is what is the effect of the transaction on the basic accounting equation? We know that we're dealing with money coming into the bank account and we know that this is a capital investment. Bank account is always an asset and we know that assets increase on the debit side. Capital has to do with the equity of the business and we know that equity increases on the credit side. We need to identify the two accounts involved, in this case bank and capital. We've already determined which of these accounts need to be debited and which need to be credited. So next we need to ensure that the debited amount is equal to the credited amount. In this scenario, 100,000 Rand. Then we need to indicate the date of the transaction. So let's say the date of this transaction was the 1st of May. Remember to enter this on both sides of the ledger account. We need to indicate the name of the contra ledger account, which in the case of bank would be capital. And in the case of capital, it would be bank. Then we need to remember to indicate the folio number. We'll just use a fictitious number in this case. Let's call it number one. So hopefully this will give you a better perspective of what a ledger account looks like once you've entered all the details on both sides, debit and credit.